Hey everybody. Today we're deep diving ggplot facets. This is a really simple topic to jump into and get started with to facet your plots, but when you have more sophisticated needs, things can get tricky fast. I've already loaded up Tidyverse as usual, as well as the model data package, and that has the scat data set that I'm going to be using for my first example. And I've set my theme to minimal, and I prefer that to the default theme with the gray background. I have curated my own data set here. I will put this code on GitHub, and I'll put a link to that down below. I'll also just kind of scan through it really slowly in case you want to pause the vid and copy this down by hand for some reason. All right, so the first example is going to be using the scat data set. We can learn more about that with question marks scat. I'll just put that in the console over here. Morphometric data on scat. And you can see we've got a bunch of variables that have to do with poop from uh, back from 2015. So what I'm going to do is to get a basic scatter plot that's going to show the relationship between a couple of the chemicals that are in these poops, uh, D13C and D15N. I'll save that as P, and I'll just print P. That'll show up in the viewer. I'm going to be ignoring this warning message throughout this vid with the two rows that have missing values. That's just not something that's going to be too relevant here. So um, you can see that we've got the D15N on the y-axis and D13C on the x-axis, and uh, there's our basic, our basic plot. Now, in this case, we also have the species variable. There's three different kinds of animals that are represented in this data set. And so I would like to be able to somehow keep track of which animal corresponds to which point here. And sometimes we do that with color, but uh, facets are another great way to do that. So let's see here. Let's take P and add facet wrap. And we want to wrap by species. The most common way to do this is with a tilde and then the name of the variable, so species. There we go. And I'll zoom in on that really quickly. So we can see we've still got D13C going left and right and D15N going up and down, but now we have a separate plot for bobcat, coyote, and gray fox. Notice that the variables on the X and the Y axis in each of these three facets have common scales. So D15N, for instance, is always having those labels of 5, 10, and 15, whether we're talking about bobcat, coyote, and gray fox even though bobcats and gray foxes don't have any points any higher up than about 11 or 12. And this is logical. It allows us to compare the three groups much more directly and much more clearly. It is possible to override the default, but I generally don't recommend it. Let me show you how you do it, just in case you ever need to. It is the additional argument in the facet wrap uh, scales equals quote free. And there it is. You can see now the x-axis and the y-axis both have different scales for each of the variables. Again, this makes comparisons more difficult. I don't recommend it. So I'm just going to go ahead and take that out. The other option that I commonly use when I'm doing facet wrap is uh, to talk about or is to control the arrangement of the different facets. And the, um, the nice thing about facet wrap it has, is that it has pretty good defaults. And if, for instance, you're in a Quarto document, it generally comes up with a decent uh, way of displaying the multiple facets. But you can change um, how things are displayed with either N row or N column. So currently I have one row. If I want all of these to be on top of one another rather than side by side, I can do N row equals three, for example. And uh, that might be helpful for some purposes. I think on this screen, it maybe doesn't look as good, but uh, that has more to do with this particular plot than anything special about uh, uh, putting them all on one row versus three rows. Now, I want to show an alternative way of, uh, of specifying the variable that we're faceting by, because I recently learned that this tilde syntax is, uh, is older and isn't preferred, according to the, um, to the documentation, by the authors of facet wrap. So let's do another one. Let's do P plus facet wrap. And instead of doing that tilde notation, let's use vars and then specify the variable that we want to facet by. So vars species, and maybe I won't put in the n row three this time. And that will give me the exact same result as I had previously. Now, 
This is a little bit more verbose. There's a few more keystrokes, but it actually does kind of make sense um, when you think about it. The idea is that VARS is supposed to work just like AES, just like aesthetics, except here, of course, the facets aren't really an aesthetic in this sense and aren't treated exactly in the same way. The I think the reason that VARS hasn't become uh, widely adopted is just that it doesn't, there isn't a an obvious use case for when VARS works better than the tilde. If you look in the help file, there is, um, uh, there's an example about making a wrapper function. So maybe that would help you eventually. I haven't, uh, haven't encountered it yet. Okay. Now, um, it is possible to put more than one variable in your facet wrap, either when you use VARS or this tilde notation. I think I will, um, use the tilde notation just cause that's the mo more common. And instead of just species, let's wrap now by species and location. So let's have a facet wrap location related to species. This is gonna work. It's not gonna look as great as we would like. Okay, so there it is. And we do get a grid of facets, edge, 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 middle, sorry, edge, 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 middle, 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 off, 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 and then bobcats, coyotes and gray foxes going up and down. Again, it works, but this isn't really the intended use of facet wrap. The better choice rather than facet wrap when you have more than one variable and you want to create an array of plots is facet grid. And this is really intended um, and built for when you have these, when you have two variables that you want to facet by. And this will look better in, in a number of small ways. There's the same information being carried, but it looks nicer. One warning about this, when you have facets that have, when you have many, many facets, the, um, it becomes information overload fairly quickly. So if you compare this grid of nine plots to the grid of three plots that I had a few minutes ago, it's much harder to draw conclusions from this one than it was from the last one. Sometimes just communicating more information isn't always the best. As always, when you're making a plot, I recommend thinking very clearly about what story you're trying to tell. What are you really trying to say with that plot? And if you're trying to say something about the relationship between species and location, for instance, maybe this isn't the best way to do it. Similarly, if you're trying to say something about the relationship between the chemicals along with the species, also not the best way to do it. So just think carefully about what you're really trying to accomplish. Okay, so, um, the real challenge, I think, for faceting comes in when you want to mess with the labels. So here we have bobcat, coyote, and gray fox written in lowercase with, for instance, an underscore when we skip, separate out the word gray from the word fox. And we might want to make those more professional. Facet wrap and facet grid have a built-in solution to this that I will show fairly briefly, but I think that it's generally easier and more practical to just go into the data set and recode the variables if you want to change them. So I'm going to focus on that. That's really going to be the thing I'm going to be working on in my second example. That also has the advantage of giving us some additional options for the formatting of those labels. So I'm going to go back to facet wrap here. Let's pull up the help file on this and uh, see, what it's, uh, see what it's showing in terms of, of changing the labels. The big thing is this label or argument. And if we go down and read about it, it says that it's a function. So unfortunately, you can't just pass it a vector of, for instance, label names like you might want to, or something similar that, like that. You actually have to build a function that you're going to use, that facet wrap or facet grid will use to, uh, to change those labels. So I have, uh, I have written such a function and put it on my clipboard, so I'll just paste it in here. Again, I don't want to dwell on this at length. So um, the way that you build a labeler function is with the as labeler. It's the easiest way it is possible just to write the function yourself, but uh, this is the, the more direct way. And then inside of that, you can just pass it a named vector with the names of the labels that you want, the names of the labels that you have, and so this will work. Now, this is um, annoying on several level levels. First, the, uh, the fact that you need to write this function, but then also the fact that it's the sort of old label equals new label syntax here is actually the opposite of how most things work in tidyverse. For instance, if you're renaming columns, it's new, 
new name equals old name. So that's another way in which this isn't so practical. All right, so um, let's go back up to the facet wrap. Let's do P plus uh, facet wrap. And we'll do it just by species. And we'll do labeler now equals, format this vertically, uh, my labeler. And there we go. And if we zoom in, you can see that now I've got the labels that I want. These look a little bit more professional. So that's great news. The help file for labeler is actually really helpful. And um, it's also got a link that takes you to as labeler. And reading a little bit in here, you can see that there are some built-in labeler functions. I'll use one a little bit later that can be useful. Just unfortunately, none of them uh, uh, particularly apply to the most common situation here. So I want to do one more example, this time using the data set that I built myself to show the more natural approach to changing facet labels, which is just modifying the underlying data set. And as we'll see, there are still some subtleties in there and some challenges that uh, are worth having some understanding of. So um, let's just glimpse this set. Let's see what we got. Um, I just called this DF. So here we have three columns. Set is a character vector. We have one, two, and three. And then we've got an X value and a Y value. So my variables aren't too cleverly defined, too cleverly named here. Let's make this basic GG plot here. You can see that we've just wrapped it by set. And we have three scatter plots with regression lines. The story here is that I was making a demonstration, preparing a demonstration, where I wanted to show the differences in plots that had different values of R squared, different coefficients of determination. And I wanted them in a situation where the regression line always had the same slope. So in each of these plots, that's the case. On the left, I have an R squared of about 0.2, in the middle, 0.5, and on the right, 0.3. So again, getting the facets is very easy. But where it gets a little bit more complicated is that I would like to change these labels. Instead of 1, 2, and 3, I would like them to be R squared equals 0.2, R squared equals 0.5, and R squared equals 0.8. So um, that's going to take a little bit of work. In most situations, the best and most natural approach is just to modify the underlying data set. And that's what I'm going to do here. And uh, I've already coded this into the script to spare you from uh, watching all my typing and my typos. I am taking the data set, df, and mutating it. So I'm going to change the variable set, the column set. And I'm going to recode it so that where I had a 1, now I have r squared equals 0.2. Where I had a 2, I have r squared is 0.5, and so on. Um, again, notice that the, um, the syntax here is kind of reversed from what it was with the, the as labeler. The new label is on the left, the old label is on the right, which is the, the norm in tidyverse. I used factor recode because um, it's simpler than, for instance, case when, and also the behaviors for facet wrap tend to be a little bit more consistent and predictable. I saved it as DF2. That way, if I try and rerun factor recode, um, I don't get errors when it doesn't find a variable called one, for instance. OK, so let's copy and paste the ggplot command that we had and just change DF to DF2 and see how this looks. Let's look at our labels. OK, so um, the strings that I passed are now shown directly r caret 2 equals point, 0 0.2, and then same with 0.5 and 0.8. So those labels are more descriptive. I'm not fully satisfied with these at this point, because I would really like this to have a superscript. I would actually love it if it said r squared. So it's time to take care of that. And uh, I can do that with a added argument in facet wrap. And not surprisingly, it's labeler. And here we're going to use one of the built-in labeler functions. And so the one that we want is label parsed. And this lets the facet wrap command know that it should treat these things as math. Now, we can go to this help file for label parsed and get some information. So facet wrap and facet grid come with several built-in useful labeler functions. 
we're going to be using label parsed, which is going to tell FacetWrap to interpret the strings it finds in these quotes for the labels as math and to typeset them appropriately. And um, some of these have other potentially use, potential uses as well for you. Now, when I run this, it's still not going to look quite right. Somehow I got equals parenthesis and then I got the R squared comma point too. And uh, this actually is logical. If we go back to the help file, we can see why. If a little bit annoying. And so let's see here. Label parsed interprets the labels as plot math expressions. So personally, I had never heard of plot math. So let's take a quick look at that. So I just did a quick Google search and clicked on one of the very first links for plot math. This is mathematical annotation in R. So this really is um, native to R. Unfortunately, it's uh, not exactly like anything or not even very similar to anything that you might already be familiar with. For instance, uh, LaTeX. And what's going on here is that in order to do x equals y, you need actually a double equal sign, you can see here. So um, at some point, I'll have to do a whole vid on what this is and what the use and what its use cases are. But for the moment, let's just go back up and add an extra equal sign to this mutate command that gave us df2. Oh, the equal sign needs to be inside my string, of course. There we go. All right. And so now I'm expecting to see the labels look a lot better. So literally r squared equals 0.2 and so on. So this is starting to look better. By the way, as I was making this plot, as I was preparing that demonstration, I wanted to make it look better than just what we see here. So um, I'll just show you the code that I used and, uh, and actually run it. I'll zoom in on it in just a second and for it to look even better. But uh, you'll see I put a, um, a different line width and a different color. This is the uh, hex code for the color that I use in my logo and some of my other branding. I have also done some work with the theme. So that's where I got this sort of uh, manila background, the beige background. And I took out all the ticks. I didn't feel like they were relevant for the demonstration I was trying to do, illustrating the different values of R squared in the different plots. My audience wasn't going to care about the X and the Y, so I took those out. Well, I hope this video was helpful to you in improving your ability to work with facets. Facets are a very easy thing in R to do at a very simple level, but if you want to make things really look professional, it can take a little bit more tinkering and a lot more knowledge.